Stephen and I went to Mother Sherwood to listen to the historic announcement and proclamation of the E-Day by Winston Churchill, which he broadcast from London at 3pm. Today and tomorrow Wednesday as Victory in Europe Day. Long live the cause of freedom. God save the King. As soon as Churchill finished speaking, the whistles began to blow and church bells rang and the streets of St Helens echoed with cheering and noise. The noise in Clyde Street was so great that we rushed out to see what was happening. The streets was thronging. Children and grown-ups were marching to the beat of a drum and frantically waving flags. Several of the women were in costumes, a clown, a fat sailor, and a dandy in full dress suit, tall silk hat, branching a cane in time with the music. After supper, we went to the Thanksgiving service at the parish church. On our way back, we followed a route to see the sights. Nearly every street was alive with colour and crowds. Not only were British flags displayed from nearly every house, there were also the flags of all the Allies on display. Cuddle lights, one sort or another. Windows of pictures of the royal family, Winston Churchill and other celebrities displayed in the centre of a large V. We were touched to see in one house a window notice which read to the effect that those who were celebrating would please remember John, Harry and George who had gone from that house and would not be returning to celebrate the victory that they helped to win. On some streets there were large bonfires being prepared or actually burning. At Siegfried Lane, we saw an effigy of Hitler hanging with dirty washing which was later burned on an enormous bonfire. We wandered into the park where there were more bonfires ablaze and a radio loudspeaker blurring out announcements and dance music while people danced. Warwick Street began to be its gayest at about half ten or eleven pm and kept it up until about two am. A piano was moved onto the sidewalk and later a radio loudspeaker was rigged up out of doors. The neighbours gathered together to sing and dance. At 5pm the following evening, long tables were set up in the middle of the street. Chairs were brought and most of the people living within the block brought their different food items on the table and had tea together. Some people wore costumes of red, white and blue or any comical rig that they could get hold of. There was more singing and dancing of all kinds, folk dances, children's game dances and round dances. As on the previous night, the festivities continued until the wee hours of the morning. We were wishing for a movie camera to catch in a film the moving and changing human interest of the celebrations, which we witnessed on the two holidays.